take the honor. I just want to say thank you. You get the glory. Yeah, yeah. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. That's it. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Get the glory. Just wanna say thank you, thank you. You get the glory, you get the praise, you take the honor. Thank you. All you may be seated in his presence. My God. Why don't you just look at somebody and say, I'm to be here in the house of the Lord. Or tell somebody else, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be here. Get your Bibles. We have been not going to hold you long because of the weather outside. Don't want you to be here past the time that uh, we can get you home at a safe time. You would open up your Bibles and go with me to, to understanding the presence, trying to bring clarity to the presence, and understanding that the presence is not just a feeling, but the presence is more than that, and we're finding that out. And tonight, I just want to talk to you for a few minutes. Thank you, musicians. I want to talk to you for a few minutes about the next level, being called to the next level of worship. In the monitor, please. In the next level of worship. The next level of the presence. Go with me to I want to go back to the book of Jonah. The book of Jonah. Is that they try to get me to? And the devil is a liar. How you change so much that the enemy could tell I'm about to be done on you. I don't like being sick. And a cold not even a sickness. It's just a torment and sickness and the flu, all of it just torments you. They go to the doctor, they be like coughing, like is you choking and you're here, take this. And you know, it ain't, it ain't even real. It's just something to get on your nerves and try to hinder you. Amen, somebody? Amen. Unique, I don't see you. You're not looking at me. Okay. And also beginning on next Tuesday, we're going to be changing the format a little bit of our Tuesday night services. And I'll let you know a little bit more about that when we get to that point. But tonight I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes about the presence of the Lord. And I, I went back to this because I was teaching something in on television, on Impact Network, and I was taping for the television broadcast. And I came across something that I really could not let go of. And I came across the phrase that the presence was not just um, something that was mystical, but the presence was both understanding and the face of God. The presence of God was the face of God and the understanding of God. And I said 
this in the previous um, segments that I began to teach this, but something grabbed me about it. Janika, you still not watching me. Something grabbed me about it that became very interesting. It says that the presence is by means of divine truth in the understanding that man can perceive the Lord's presence. I'm going to say that again. It's the means of divine truth, not regular truth, divine truth. What is divine truth? Something that I did not foreknow that is not just a truth, but it is the complete truth. Not a partial segment of the truth, but the complete truth. And in order for me to be a recipient of the divine truth, I have to be chosen. Yes. Yes. He has to choose you to know him. Yes. Yes. That's why you got people out there now that's, you know, still clubbing, whatever they want to do. Because they don't understand that you have to be chosen and engrafted yes. in order to be, to be the person that God chooses to download divine truth. Right. Yes. Which means it's a privilege. Now, we're going to talk about that. I want you to keep that word in your spirit. Tell yourself it's a privilege, it's a privilege. to be chosen it's for divine truth. Divine Say it again. It's a privilege, it's a privilege. to be chosen it's a for divine truth. divine truth. So let me help you understand that. Which means then that if I am a person that is to be uh, the recipient of this divine truth, I must understand now that I am designed to be a receptacle of that truth. Yeah, right. In other words, I'm made, you ask yourself, well, why is it that some people act like the presence of the Lord is not in the room, and in other people, you know, you, 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 you see them all over the floor, and they're crying, and they're weeping, and they're going through all kinds of changes, and they, and they just up in high worship. Because, Lord, this is something. The more the Lord digs your spirit out, yeah. the deeper he goes down in your belly, right. the more truth you can handle. Right. Yeah. So then you can't praise a God you don't know. Yeah. Right. And you can only partially worship a God that you partially know. Right. I'm saying something right there. Right. And so if there is no choosing, I have to choose my words like that. If there, because I can't, I, I, I can't act as if God is talking to everybody. Because watch this, watch this. He's talking to those that He has chosen to know the truth. Yes, right. yes. Got somebody, He chose me to know this. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't just look up on this. So the more He goes down in my spirit, the more He digs me out. The more He digs me out. The more He digs me out. The deeper it goes. The deeper it goes. The deeper it goes. The deeper it goes. Then I am filled up with divine truth. Yes. And so when I get filled with it, then I don't struggle to walk in it. Right. I just said something right there. Yes. I walk in it because I'm full of it. Right. Right. Lord have mercy. Right. Yes. If part of the veins was working in your body, if the Lord had part of your body was not working and you had no veins, no, no, no muscle strength, you would be having upper body strength. Right. But you can't stand up. Because something is not working properly. There's not a flow of something in the body properly. So when you find people that cannot walk in truth, it's because something is not flowing properly in all of the body. There's some nutrients of divine truth that's missing. Who is God talking to? Who is God talking to? Okay, I'm gonna say some stuff tonight that's gonna, that's gonna, that's gonna bless you showing up. Well, if I am a receptacle, meaning I've been designed for truth, Lord Jesus, then I am to walk with an expectation that something is going to come to try to rebuttal that truth. Yes. Yes. See, the reason why we keep getting knocked out the box is because we keep acting surprised. Yes. I'm not hearing y'all. The reason why we can't stand when things happen is because we keep getting knocked out the box because we keep acting surprised. 
When you walk with the truth, you are the deadliest weapon to the enemy. And his job is to knock the truth out of you. And the way he does it is with lies. How do I know it's a lie? Because it's, watch this, it's so profound until it sounds believable. He attaches a truth about you so that he can use a truth to cultivate a lie because all he needs you to do is partially believe it. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm going to help us tonight. I'm going to help us tonight. Cold and all. I'm going to help us tonight. So we talked about last week about, about the ushers of the Lord and how God uses, he uses the ushers. He uses the ushers to usher us in. So, so last week we learned that, and, and, and this is going to help you, we learned that, that when I am, uh, 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 when I am feeling like I'm being attacked, I'm being ushered. Yes. I'm being ushered into the presence. I'm being driven yes. into that presence. Yes. But watch this. But watch this. But watch this. So then, why the attack period? Why the attack period? Why am I attacked? Period. What is, what is it all about? And I told you last week, you got to fix your mouth to stop saying nothing. Because when you don't know all the truth, you can only label it the truth that you know. So we've always labeled everything as, you know, the devil did this and the devil did that. I gotta keep saying this to you. The enemy cannot do anything that God does not allow him to do. And when the Lord allows it, he doesn't allow it so that the devil can get glory. He allows it because there is a purpose in you that has to come out. And everything that's in you cannot come out with sugar. I just said that right there. You're not just going to be in the presence of God and, oh, I saw angels. It's not going to happen like that. Because when it's time for you to go into a depth of the anointing, into a depth of that presence, I'm not talking about the goosebump level. I'm talking about the assignment level. When it's time to go to the assignment level, then watch this. Then the thing that God uses to push you to that death is an attack. Yeah. Somebody said, wait a minute. Are you serious? Yeah, he uses the attack. I'm going to help somebody. David was in the king's palace. He was serving. Yes. Lord, have mercy. But when it was time, Dr. Johnson, for God to bring him from the back to the forefront, the Bible said that God caused an evil spirit. God did it. Oh, you know what the devil jumped on saw? No, God did it.
that's when you show up. Because you are the truth. Why you always 
make it be bow down. Why well, I always got to look like the sucker? Why well, I always got to look like the person that's weak and always giving in? I'm not hearing y'all. Who am I talking to? Because you were made that way. that thing the right way. But you were made that way. You can't help yourself. You are the apologizer because you have been anointed according to the book of Corinthians to bring reconciliation. Oh, by shut up myself. He didn't tell you to stand your side. He said,
He's troublesome. So, so, so. Oh, come on. I tell you, I, I don't know if you ever been put in a picture in here. You, you minister to something and you almost passed out on the path. Because right here, I almost, yeah. I felt like yeah. I was getting ready to yeah. slam. Yeah. Because he said this, for real, y'all. Yeah. He said this. He said, when David got called to the room to where Saul was tormented, he didn't go in there running his mouth. The only thing that can come the spirit of the enemy is the gift that God gave you. Tell somebody you using the wrong weapon. Good God, I feel like shouting tonight. Hey, the Lord, shout out. Tell somebody you using the wrong weapon. If God anointed you to preach, the only thing that's going to silence the enemy, you got to preach. I still got it. I still got it. The devil 
He said, disobedience is not at its height until you have been called to a life.
this is when you, this is when, this is when God got to help you go. When he says, arise and go. Arise and go. This is going to bless you good. And sometimes we give you stuff. I see it. Pastor said, well, you come and do it. Sometimes he said, arise and go. So the ability to go is in another dimension. Now hear what I'm saying. This is going to help. Your ability to go where God has predestined for you to go is in this way. to run from becoming a receptacle of truth. Can I just teach that right there? I remember when I used to be out there smoking weed and stuff like that. Now they done made it legal. So funny. Till uh, a couple of weeks ago, my sister, <laughs> my sister ran into my best friend when I was in the sixth grade who taught me how to smoke and smoke weed. And uh, I hadn't seen her in years. Kathy was like, guess who I saw? I said, you lying. She said, no, I took a picture of her. I said, that was my girl right there. <laughs> She's like, change your clothes and come to the house and we gonna go in the basement and teach you how to smoke. So I took the first pull off of some Winston. I said, that's too strong. She said, no, you got to learn how to smoke a strong cigarette. Then you pick your choice. She said, just inhale and just hold it. And my chest would be hurting me right there. She was like, leave your bag outside in the backyard. And then when you get through learning how to smoke, then you go change your clothes and go home. Your mom don't smell smoke. So 
every day. She said, come to my house every day and tell your mama you gotta, you gotta get tutored by me in math or something. I said, okay, well, have me lying. <laughs> then I'm going to her house every day in the basement. And I left that set of clothes there, the smoking clothes. And I put the smoking clothes on and sit at her table in the basement and start smoking. She said, still hurt. I said, love it. She said, you almost there. She said, I said, but I want to learn how to smoke weed. She said, you can't get this weed going to knock your chest out. You got to learn this. That girl was something else. So I done, I'm, I'm up here learning how to smoke. I, I, I took a bath, everything, showered. And so because her aunt smoked, when I would come home, my mama said, I smell smoke. I said, that's her auntie. You mama, you know her auntie smoking. It all be in my hair. So one day I came home, and my, we were sitting at the dinner table, and my mother looked at me and said, smoke another cigarette. And I was looking like, how you know that? Because truth no truth. I'm not hearing y'all. That's why some of y'all get all shook up when, 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 when God got people that sit over your life and they come and say, I see what you're doing. But how you know that? Because the truth can see the truth. Oh, he, he is. He's a receptacle of truth. He's running from being an oracle of the truth. He's been called to be the speaker of the house on behalf of God. And he's running from being a receptacle. And he goes and gets in a ship. And God causes a storm. The one y'all say is the devil. Prophetess, you pray for me because the devil is raging. No, he ain't. It's your whirlwind. Oh, y'all, the saints ain't saying nothing tonight. Uh, that, that the Biden, the devil is really busy. No, it's your whirlwind. It's your whirlwind because you won't preach. It's your whirlwind because he keeps telling you to hold that Bible study in your house and you won't. I'm going to say that because I felt that one right there. It's your whirlwind because he keeps telling you to start all night prayer and you won't. I'm not hearing y'all. The storm start raging. You got your best friend praying. I'm going to help you with this one. You got your cousin praying. You got your mama praying. You got your auntie praying. All of a sudden, auntie done had a heart attack. Mama done fell down the steps. Cousin's car done got hit. Because everybody is coming in your warfare. Because you won't say yes to God. And you got people, I'm not hearing y'all, y'all ain't saying that up in here. And you got the whole family in warfare because they praying against the will of God. All because you won't be a receptacle of the truth. I'm not hearing y'all. If you want some of this warfare to stop, you better start saying yes to God. I'm not hearing y'all. Ain't no, anybody on Facebook talking. I don't know. I, maybe I'm just talking about myself. Now y'all sit down. I got to finish it. I got 10 minutes. They came in, they said, excuse us. We done threw everything we got overboard. Mama said, I done prayed all I could. Now when you get this one right here, you know you better say yes to God. When you get your mama saying, I'm gonna give you in the hands of the Lord. You be like, wait mama, don't give me in the hands of the Lord. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, y'all been raised, y'all been raised by this younger generation. Well, they throw stuff at you and all that. They cuss you out. You know, the little mamas these days, they cuss you out. They throw stuff at you. They turn up tables. But you ain't seen fear until you got a sanctified mama to just get quiet. You start saying, mama, you want some coffee? Uh-uh. Mama, I'm getting ready to go get some donuts. You want me to bring you something back? No. Jules, uh -uh. you know what I'm talking about. You got one of the mamas. Ma ma mama, uh, 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 I'm going to be playing... Uh, at the football, thing. Uh, is you coming? Yeah, I'll be there. And you look up in the bleachers and she just sitting there. <laughs> the game over, you win, you run all up to her. Mama, we won. I said, all right, get your coat and come on. I I'll meet you at the car. <laughs> you 
be like, Jesus? Like, what? what's going on? Because she done put you in the hands of the Lord. And then you better not have one of the mamas that know how to screenshot up her sanctified eyes and go, I ain't going to talk to you no more. And don't let her grit her teeth and say, God, God got this. I done told God and I ain't going to say another thing to you. Your room all nasty. You in there cleaning up the room and everything. She come on from you done cook dinner and everything. Six days in a row. You just cooking and cleaning and caring. Because she won't talk. Because you know when she shut up, then God done gone to work. And they came and told Jonah, we done threw everything we got overboard. Who are you running from? It's the name of your God. That's what the scripture said. It said, who are you running from? And what is the name of your God? Because when we have done everything to steady the ship. And the wind still won't stop. And the ship still won't come down. Then we know this is a God thing. Who is your God boy and who you running from? When I done prayed. And the storm won't cease. You got to turn around and ask say about who you running from. Okay, I'm going to tell you one more story. I got to go. Okay, this is going to be an example. So my daddy, my daddy was a real big religious tithe payer. You can do whatever you want to do and go to heaven if you pay your tithes. That's how my daddy, you know, he just, so when we were young teenagers, he would say, you got a job? Yes, sir. He said, how much you make? I make this much. He said, take your, out, your ties out, and the same amount as your ties, you get an offer. So we said, yes, sir. So every week, it's wheeling in my ears. Every week, we would take out our offer. We would take out our ties. And every week, my father would come to us and say, you got your ties? Yes, sir. They, it's wheeling in my ears. He's squealing in my ears. He said, you got your, you got your tithes? Yes, sir. Let me see them. So if your tithes and your offering ain't got a, a, a weak old crease in it, he know you spent it and tried to double back to get it. He make you take it out, and if it ain't creased real good, he said, you, you stole God's money and you tried to replace it. He said, you take them tithes and offering out first. So... Me and one of my sisters, being who we are, we're going to do the payback to God. You know, we done missed a couple of weeks, but we're going to pay it back. So something happened to the boiler in the house. Then the septic tank spilled over. My daddy came in the house and said, who ain't paying their tithes in here? He said, because evil can't get in this house unless somebody in here is under curse. Who ain't paying their time? And we start crying. Uh, I did like I did still it, Daddy. I was no man. You don't touch God's money. Because when you do, you bring this whole house under curse. Now see, Dr. Morgan, everybody got kind of quiet in here now. He said, now I'm going to get all this stuff fixed. And if you don't want to pay your tithes, you go live with your auntie or somebody. But ain't nobody curse gonna live in here. He said, cause when you curse with a curse, you drive my car, they'll tear it up. Right. You can't drive my car, you don't hear me. You can't live in my house, I'm not hearing y'all. And this is what was wrong with Jonah. That's right. They said, who you running from? Wow. Who is your God? Wow. And he came, he said, they said, you all slammed out down here on the bottom of the boat. And we all up here frustrated throwing stuff overboard and you all lay it all out. Who is your God? And Jonah said, it's me. I'm running from the presence. Come on, Jules. He said, it's me. I'm running from being a receptacle of the truth. I'm going to bless y'all. I'm going to bless you real good right here. I'm running from being a receptacle of the truth. I was born this way. I'm 
going to help you, and I'm closing with this because this is going to bless you real good right here. You watch my face with me. He said, the Bible said, his father's name was Amittai. And his name meant my truth. So he came from being, he came from a father of the truth. He was the seed of the truth. You can be in a realm, but the true presence is something I was born in. Somebody say in the day, well, you know what, Dr. Biden, my, my mother was a drunk, my father was an alcoholic, I didn't know my dad, da, 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 da. But then God brings spiritual parents in your life. And then you're born again. And when you're born again, from the top of your head to the sole of your feet, he recreates your whole body. And now you become a receptacle of the truth. And then your relatives don't understand you because they say, where'd you get all that from? Because I was born again. I got new spiritual parents and I've been birthed out in truth and now I have to be a receptacle of the truth and now the Lord is calling me to be an oracle of the truth and that is the only way that warfare will be stopped. Good Lord have mercy. When he got through running, when he got through lying, when he got through hiding, when he got through being dumped overboard, when he got through almost drowning and going to the belly of a fish, when he came out, he still had it. Yeah. Think about being called to pursue the presence and to be a receptacle of the truth that no matter what you do and where you go, you're going to take it with you. I, I, I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing y'all. Who is God talking to? You going to the club, it's going with you. When I used to be at the parties and just dancing, sitting up drinking, one of my girlfriends said, you don't even look right. <laughs> now, you know when the devil sends you back to church, you need to go. She said, you, just, you, you, just, you don't even, you ain't even supposed to be out here like this. And I used to just say, no, 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 because I, I ain't into that church. At that time, I was wearing a big old afro, one red sock, one green skirt. I was a old power to the people. Angela Davis all on my wall. I was a mess. I was a mess. As soon as I start getting high, smoking weed, y'all know why it's real. <laughs> I know about you smoking weed, but if you know what, God, God is all powerful. So my friends hate to get high with me because they knew I was going to start preaching. Y'all ain't saying that. I wish somebody would say something. Talk about, I'll tell you, I was raised up. Somebody said, girl, I don't feel all that church. Wait, well, if my grandma would start praying for you. I'll tell you the power of God, you know, you, you start crying, you can't stop because God is real because, you know, his word said, preaching while smoking weed. As soon as I start getting high, getting drunk. Receptacle of the truth. I'm talking to everybody in here, everybody that's watching. When you call to be a receptacle of the truth, even when you're laying down with the devil, you can hear the scriptures. You'll be like, Oh God, don't let me die while I'm here, Jesus. Oh God. Of the pleading, the blood, and everything. Come on, somebody. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You ain't as soon as you get in the shower, you be talking about some father, forgive me. Just Lord, just, just wash it off me, Jesus. <laughs> Count me for it, Lord. You know this ain't in my heart, Lord. You know this ain't me, Jesus. It's just something I fell into, but God just, oh, Lord, just help me. You just come out looking like you just been evangelized or something. And start swearing you ain't going to do it no more. And be right back there the next night. Tell me, oh, Lord, forgive me. Oh, Lord, forgive me.
aquí. Somebody shout, I am a receptacle of the truth. My time is up. Come on, somebody give God praise. Somebody give God praise. Come on, give it praise. Are you watching right now on Facebook? You give it praise. Because you are a receptacle of the truth. And you cannot run from it. I want y'all to turn around and touch three people. If you ain't got nobody in your house, just pat yourself three times. And say, I still got it. Oh, come on, somebody. Tell somebody I still got it. Come on, tell somebody I still got it. Turn around and tell your neighbor it ain't gone. Tell your neighbor you done made a mistake, but it's still there. Tell your neighbor you tried to run from it, but it's still there. He's still calling you. He still wants you. And give him praise if you believe it. Give him praise if you believe it. So glad he ain't like me. His mercy endureth forever. Somebody give him a praise. I hear the Lord saying, I still want you. I hear the Lord saying, I still need you. Walk in faith 
and therefore I'm going to move in faith. Some of you all, God said, need to sow a double seed. He said, somebody that's watching, you need to sow double. Because God is about to set you on high. I'm going to say it again. How do I know that the Lord is calling you to go higher? Because resistance has come in your life. And that is your indicator. It's time to go. Hit that contact us button. Sow that seed and make the devil out of the liar that he is. Yes, he wants you to listen. But this is how you activate what you have heard. You put a seed on it. And then you put a praise on it. And watch God. And see what he's getting ready to do behind that. Somebody give God a shout in here. You go with God. And until next time.